many people come to the church only because of her. Wow, I didn't know. But she came and gave me so many kisses. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's so nice to hear when somebody comes and says this. You know why? That person's heart is so sensitive. So sensitive. I don't want appreciation from uh, appreciating me. I want you to go and do what the word of God says. I don't want appreciation at all. You know, I used to, when I am learning this, um, I think I'm learning this for, uh, from 2000, I think 2011 or 12, I'm learning this hardness of heart. Till now I'm learning. And I will be learning. Because there is so much to learn in it. And by the from the time I'm learning from 2011 on this hardness of heart, I always think, you know, uh, uh, my heart will become sensitive. We will learn about it tomorrow, okay? The symptoms and other things. When uh, I thought in the beginning when I was trying to learn and, you know, the Holy Spirit was giving the revelation when I was studying, I thought my heart will become sensitive when I study more. Means more scriptures, more knowledge and more input. Because then my heart will become sensitive. But then the Holy Spirit told me it's not about how much knowledge you receive or how much input you have that doesn't matter at all. Because he showed me the disciples and he said, you see these disciples, they did not have the Bible like us. They did not have so many teachings like us. But whatever they got, that little, for, that, for example, that sister, when she saw, she understood something. That something which she saw, people getting healed, that was enough for her. She believed everything exactly. She did not reason. She doesn't want the reason how it happens. She believes, that's it. I could see that. Because in, in within two seconds, her eyes got healed, her legs got healed, her knees got healed, her back got healed. Within two minutes, not even going and explaining to her what is faith, what is this. But for you people, I have to explain a lot. Because it takes time for us to become sensitive. Then the Lord explained to me, showed me that even though they know that little knowledge that they had, they were more considering what they knew. What I consider is important. How much knowledge I have is not important. But how much I consider the knowledge which... Okay, I'll ask in another way. What is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? You know, that's why you see there are many people who know many scriptures. But there is no manifestation. But there is no power. There is no healing. And they wonder, how come this sister, for example, that sister has come, okay, and one big person has come who knows all the scripture. She could go and convert the whole slum. And this person who knows hundreds of uh, scriptures by heart cannot even go and change one person. Why? It's not the knowledge. It's how sensitive, how much, even though the knowledge is less, that person is considering and thinking and pondering and meditating and completely sensitive. But the other person has knowledge and good memory power, but all the time considering what she spoke, he said, what he did, what that person said, what is the WhatsApp status, what are others talking about me, how many people are giving me likes, how many people are commenting, how many people saw my status. Correct? You might have knowledge, but at the same time, you can be hardened. You might have less knowledge, but at the same time, you can be sensitive. Knowledge is required. Knowledge is the information I receive. Without the information, nothing will happen. I need knowledge. But wisdom is to apply that knowledge. And wisdom comes only through 
sensitive heart. A person can have knowledge and can be smart, but a person can be wise only when he is sensitive. A person can be a person full of wisdom only when he has only when he is sensitive. Otherwise, he can have knowledge and brilliant and intelligent, but yet extremely hardened in his heart. But a person who is sensitive is not only having knowledge, but he is a wise, a person full of wisdom who can apply that word in the midst of problem and persecution. Are you understanding? Is the truth setting us free? Yes. What are you considering? What are you thinking on? What are you pondering? What are you imagining? What are you spending time more? What are you relating to more? If you are going to relate to the physical, if you are going to relate to the things that are natural, we are not called to live natural life. Please. That's why Jesus is saying, Oh, you faithless, perverse generation. You are not called to live a normal life. You are not called to live a natural life. If Jesus would be here, he would get irritated. He will say the same words to you. How long should I be with you? You are not called to live a natural life. You are supposed to expect supernatural. You are supposed to heal the sick. You are supposed to cast out the demons. You are supposed to live in the supernatural. Supernatural should be a normal day-to-day -day life. It's not only for some preachers or some anointed or some chosen people. It is uh, every Christian normal life. If you are not experiencing that supernatural life because your hearts are hardened. Because our hearts are hardened. The disciples could not do miracles. Why? Their hearts were hardened. Because of their unbelief. And how this unbelief comes? How this unbelief comes? How this unbelief comes? Okay, we'll see an example. Go to Romans chapter 4 from verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall your seed be mm. and not okay, and be read, read it again uh, 18 yeah who Against hope, okay, okay, go to the 17th verse. As it is written, as it is written, I have made you, I will make you, I will make you, I have made you, I will make you, I have. Made you. When did Jesus say, God saying this? I have made you father of many nations. When he is saying this? When he was? When he was almost put the 19th verse? Ah, see, when he was about an 100 years old. See the third line, fourth line. About an 100 years old. What is God saying? I have made you father of 10 children. 5 children. 15 children. Is there any logic? 
he i will make you or i have made you is it possible for abraham to believe such promise who said this praise the lord hallelujah okay as it is written i have made you a father of many nation before whom he believed even god who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were then who against who believed in hope that he might become the father of many nation according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be then and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body he considered not his own body he considered not his own body why he did not become weak and being not weak in faith why he did not become weak in faith because he did not think about he did not ponder he did not study he did not meditate he did not imagine of his own body praise the lord hallelujah if you see in your life in every situation in your life in every situation in your life that two things one the spiritual another the physical one the promise of god another the problem one the bible says believe and you and your family shall be saved another side whatever i see happening physically two now am i going to consider means think ah my husband said like this my mother said like this my father said like this my friends said like this am i going to consider think ponder and meditate on what all they are speaking or i am going to consider what the bible the word of god says but really what is happening even though i am praying one side even though i am confessing the scriptures even though i am praying in tongues another side i am pondering thinking meditating studying imagining what he said what she said what he spoke what will happen yes so when i am thinking and meditating and pondering and all those things what i am doing i am making my heart harden to what i am ignoring and what i am considering i become sensitive so you become so sensitive to what they speak even though you pray you don't see manifestation because what you are considering how could abraham believe such kind of promise because even though he could see his body as old see own body now dead the body was almost dead when he was about in 100 years old neither yet the deadness of sarah's womb he could see that the, the his wife's womb is dead physically naturally medically there is no possibility she is aged now she has no he did not have any physical proof that she can get pregnant and he could see that his body is dead but he did not think about it he did not ponder about it he did not meditate upon it he did not imagine he did not study he was only taking the scripture and he kept saying i am the father of many nation i am the father of many nation he saw the stars and he said i could not count so much is my generation when he was walking in the sand and whenever he was walking the the, the sand was irritating he said so much is my generation he was only thinking on it the so much he was thinking and considering and pondering on what god has said his heart became so hardened to his own deadness of his body that 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 did not even bother him 
he became hardened he did not affect him at all it's a process where a person makes himself hardened to the natural he did not do it with difficulty no he did not do it sweat he did not say what to do i ignore i ignore no 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 because he was speaking the word confessing the word thinking on it and that body he could not even think of that his body that has gone out from his mind he became so sensitive to the word that uh, that person is so hardened to the physical for us it is ulta for us the the problem is so real that in the mind even though i know i am healed by his wounds i could not even relate it to me i could not even experience it because why i am so hardened that that is not real in my life only that problem is real for me are you understanding praise the lord hallelujah, hallelujah. thank you jesus okay we'll take a small tea break and then we will come back okay yeah close eyes let's close eyes thank you holy spirit for teaching us and for making this teaching easy and simple lord we are ready to learn more but not just to receive information Yes lord we can get lot of information we can get lot of scriptures and we can write down notes but if we go out and if we are not going to study and ponder and examine we will have information but we will never be sensitive how much knowledge we have is not important but how much sensitive we are to your word is important help us holy spirit that we always tune in that we always continue that we always consider we always meditate on your word like the early christian like that sister that i saw yesterday a person who don't know to read and write but extremely sensitive who converted the entire slum lord we want to be like that simple and sensitive to your word but hardened to the physical things Thank you Holy Spirit for teaching us these truths. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's have tea and come back.